Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to the series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I'm gonna be going through just one book, although it's a 335 page book, Completely Unfathomable by Jason Schultes and Paul Wolf. This is the DCC version. I recently picked up a Humble Bundle, basically a bag of holding pack of all of Jason Schultes' books. So it's the Unfathomable set with the um, Odious Uplands, uh, Operation Unfathomable, and the Dungeon Dozen 1 and 2. I already had the Dungeon Dozen 1, but Dungeon Dozen 2 was included. At some point, maybe I'll include that in one of these videos. Uh, but I wanted to go through Completely Unfathomable, which is the combination of the two books, the Odious Uplands and Operation Unfathomable, which is basically just... Um, a combination of a region and a bunch of encounters and things up in the surface, which is the Odious Uplands, and then the Underdark, the delving down into the into the underworld below. These books are so bizarre. They are so cool, though. They're 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 right in line with what I think of as the DCC vibe, which is why I chose the DCC rather than the Labyrinth Lord version for this review because I think it just fits so well with the DCC core book and just the sort of over the top gonzo heavy metal you know psychedelic combination style that you get in those in the in that book in the DCC book so i wanted to go through this and just show you guys a little bit of it because it's so good the art throughout is just crazy good right i mean it's it's classic it's over the top just really really awesome I mean, the whole book is designed this way there are these character with quotes and, and you know they're, <laughs> they're just talking to you the reader um bardolf the beer hound he's an underworld ranger you get uh completely unfathomable uh the, the table of contents here uh, runs through the entire book and it's all hyperlinked in the pdf which is great uh, really really cool you get the introduction the conditions in the underworld the major regional underworld factions and their relationships encounters and other random weirdness underworld phenomena uh, competing parties and underworld travelers wandering horrors you get a map of the judge's map of the encounter areas um, and well, the details of those encounter areas and then you get the map of the underworld at the end finally and then you transition over into odious uplands which has basically the same thing, a general overview, adventuring there, factions explained, personalities there, and then the environments with map keys, notes, and then the different uh, places around the world. So you get areas of interest the, and the you know, just encounters and locations that you can, can run into there with some appendices at the end, with a brief history of the world um, and uh, various other things at the end. Really cool, really cool. And then you get uh, the, this book also includes, by the way, the player, handouts the player background books and stuff for uh this set too which which normally comes in separate documents but this this one book uh, completely unfa or operation completely unfathomable rather has it all in one book so you can normally get these separately but i just love this art it's fantastic fantastic old school art and it makes me happy <laughs> So, again, in a nutshell, this book introduces the setting of my long-running campaign of play using Swords and Wizardry. So it wasn't Labyrinth of the I think it's Swords and Wizardry. Um, as a shortcut of the vibe of the original Dungeons and Dragons. Though written for Swords and Wizardry, core rules, the game stats are easily adaptable to games such as Labyrinth Lord, OD&D, BNX, D&D, etc. And this is the DCC version, as I said. Um, this is so good. You get rumors, uh, procedures, and advice for how to run this. You get the player's map, and this is a handout that you can give them later. So it's actually a player's map in world that they can have and they can use to try to find their way through. A player introduction. Um, and then, what's going on? Extreme vetting. <laughs> I love this stuff. Equipping the party, how you should start them off. Uh, at a DCC note, the judge handing out magic items for the D the level zero funnel even begins may seem uh, like it's a bit counterintuitive. That is, until you read the entries. These items cause non-stop mayhem and playtests of Operation Unfathomable. You get the Sword of Demolition, Prismatic Arrows, uh, the Arrow of Direction and Precision, Stone Cloaks, Talisman of Imperial Law, Tincture Obscurus, Force Wands, Great Magic Items, Red and Blue Anti-Chaos Bills, 12 of each to each character. I love this. You get a guide who comes to with you. Uh, Uthu, Uthu, a sullen but brave and loyal expatriate warrior of the Zhao people, a tribe of hill barbarians and a trusted sergeant of the guard. Really, really great. So you basically have, um, yeah, an overview uh, of the whole place. Great art again. <laughs> Look like sausage link arms. That's hilarious. Whatever that thing is. 
It's kind of horrifying. And that's what you get with Completely Unfathomable or Operation Unfathomable. It's just this weird sense of the underworld. Really, really bizarre. Stuff down here is very different. It is an other world. It's not just like a kind of slightly changed overworld. The Underdark in this book is like, you know, it's just this bizarre psychedelic other thing. <laughs> That's not to say the surface in Odious Uplands is, is just totally normal. It's not. But down here is so bizarre. So, so bizarre. Um, <laughs> look, look at these creatures there. The Nullites. Just fantastic. The Worm Constabulary of Shagoth, Shagoth Ka on Authorized Revenge Rampage. It's one of the things you can run into. Eight grotesque monocular winged worms known as the Eyes of Shagoth Ka scout 120 feet ahead of a pack of 13 worm soldiers. The Inquisitorial Eyes assess any they meet in the underworld while the worm soldiers await the order to attack, barely able to contain their mounting battle frenzy. If the Eyes positively ID surface natives, which they profile ruthlessly, they zoom back to the soldiers and flash from their single eyes the strobing red signal to kill. The worm soldiers give a wet, wormish cheer and charge. Their orders kill them all and let the necromancers sort them out. Then you get their stats in DCC terms. Or the doomed Templars. Dispatched by the high priest of the Temple of the Golden Lintel, these poor avatars of law, approaching retirement age, dedicate their final breaths to, sh to shaking impotent fists in the face of chaos. They aren't idiots, though, and have pulled off some successful ambushes on the helpless laity of several chaos cults, choosing their battles carefully and making an effort to remain an unseen scourge. The Templars reek offensively, their once shiny mail now bespurched with old gore and filth, having just narrowly avoided an encounter with the worm constabulary of Shagath Ka, as they above, by hiding beneath heaps of debris. If the adventurers number more than the five, more than five, Kulinor, the ranking Templar, announces that if only fellow surface folk could join forces, they could str together strike a final defiant, suicidal blow for order. The Templars are penniless and on the verge of starvation. <laughs> I love these different entries. Slugman business trip. Science fungoid shipping crew. Blue dwarf work gang. Merchant riding glutton newt and guild warden. <laughs> what he's selling. The mutineers. Ilgoriath and Yin Su. Underworld ranger patrol. Blind antler men. It's kind of horrifying. Really gross. Look at that. I mean, look, he's got a laser gun and a sword. Very DCC, very, very gonzo d d This is not going to appeal to everybody, right? This style, this vibe. I like it from time to time. It's definitely not like my preferred standard go-to d d my, like what I like to live in or play in for a long, long time. But I love like expeditions into this sort of game. Worm Priest and Entourage. I often run run shots using DCC games that are really gonzo. I, I like a little bit of sci-fi sometimes in my fantasy I, I like this over-the-top stuff. Again, I like to have it. I like to read through it for inspiration and to, to get into that vibe. And, uh, and you know, sometimes I think it would be fun to run a longer campaign here just to see how the effect of this, because I've never really done it. I've never played a long campaign in a game like this. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how it goes after a while. But I love the art in this book. It's fantastic. It just looks great. Wandering Horrors of the Mind Bats, Giant Pill Bugs, Firebomb, Beetles, Flaming Hounds. Again, this is just great. Look at these steps. I love that. <laughs> a horrifying creature of some sort. You got a map of the Underdark, or this particular portion of the Underdark. Kind of interesting. It's lots of winding, webbing tunnels. Be a lot of fun to travel through. And locations, of course, that connect them. And it goes off, of course, over two pages. There's a lot of different locations here. A lot of different locations here. You get the judge's map, and these are the details of the different locations. Um, ancient shelters, the cave swallow nest, fungal blooms, graven images, pill bug nesting sites, underworld detritus, a worm tunnel, great art there. And then encounter areas, particular encounter areas. The Tyrannoclops, the Gugolipede, <laughs> the Gugolipede. A Beetle Town Welcome Center and Dwellings, Residential District. Beetle Science Center, the Egg Chamber, Science Fungoid Experimental Farm, Cephalax's Cradle, or the Shaft of the Odious Uplands. Residence of the Colossal Sorcerer, <laughs> big giant, fortified defense zones. Anyway, I just think this is awesome. Really, really good. And the maps are cool, solid dungeon maps. Uh, they're not too, too many of them. 
But there are enough that you can have a good uh, adventure down here. Shagath Ka, the Worm Sultan. He's nasty looking. The Oracle of the Bottomless Pit. <laughs> the Ice City of the Nanuits. And the Chaos Hive. We got the side maps of the thing going all the way through. And that's it. That's the that's that's the uh, completely unfathomable down down the or yeah, Operation Unfathomable, I should say. Completely Unfathomable is the collection book, which is what I'm looking through. The Odious ups, Uplands, the Stone Spear Province in Upper Macedonia. A wilderness for Dungeon Crawl Classics and other excellent role-playing games. Again, this is an awesome one, and I think this is... I, I like this better, I think, than the Underworld. Not to say the Underworld's not good, but up here is just... I, I like the way it, the, the vibe of it is. What it is and what it isn't. Odious Uplands is a sandbox full of characters, factions, monsters, treasures, and situations. Some are explicitly linked in the text, but many blanks must be filled in in advance or on the fly. Preparation should include familiarizing yourself with this book's contents all at once or a bit at a time as needed. Odious Uplands is not a procedural guide to wilderness exploration. You, the able judge, are expected to apply the, your favorite policies to the presented sandbox. So that's what you're looking at here. It's not a procedural. It's not a guide of how to do it. You're going to do your own process for traveling through this area. This is just stuff, locations, people, a handful of connections between some of them. Mostly it's up to you. The Crofax administration. Governor Crofax. Retired middle-aged adventurer, former barbarian, gone to land. Gone to lard. <laughs> Galand Galandigrius. Galandigrius. <laughs> Glean, the proprietor of Glean's Exchange. The names are just so, so just absurd. I love them. Love them, love them, love them. Gocorius. Ulori of House Hul. Yithrila. Yithrila. Zaloi Calum Calomo. I mean, the Bishop of the Wilderness. Flambos. Some of these names are, are very absurd. Some of them are a little bit more... Uh, understandable. Rink. Fort Enterprise and the Environs. You get the Fort Enterprise, probably the hub town you're going to be looking through. Tent town, monster alert sign, the courtyard. Uh, featuring a free sample of Jolly, flavorless lichen ale. Coloco shows up in a rage, the giant ape man, or man apes routines. Monster alerts, tree of jobs. That's great. And a bunch of jobs that you can find on the tree of jobs. The Wizard's Dormitory. This is an old school game. You might need uh, wizards to train from or to, to, to be, you know, to learn from, I should say. The Beer Garden. <laughs> the Bill of Fare. What's, what's there? Who is drinking today? Uh, the Fairy. The Experimental Hydroelectric Station. Still offline. The Temple of Law. At the Docks. Imperial Encampment. The Stockade. And Rumors. Every good town's got to have some rumors. This is a 2D12 table of rumors. Or a D24 table of rumors. Um, Fort Enterprise and Tent Town Encounters. Fort Enterprise Nighttime, Daytime Encounters, a whole bunch of them. A map of the odious uplands. So you've got a whole bunch of locations here, right? You've got Kraken Lake, you've got the Stonespear River, Ape Country, the Crab Forest, the Dominion of the Mammoth King, Underworld Incursion Site and Environs, Mount Impossible, Frost Giant Forest, the Grassy Plain, and the Fossil Forest. And it extends over two pages. I love the way this map looks. Love it. It just has a very, very, I don't know, visceral vibe. I like very, it's, it's apparent to me how the relation of things to each other, there's no questions about how, what you could see, right, from a distance. I, I love that idea. So you, when you come out of the Grassy Plain, you'd be able to see Mount Impossible, probably see across the whole plain to the west be able to see south to the fossil forest. Just you, can, you get a good sense of what you're looking at and where you'll be able to look at it. Um, the player map, which you also get again at the end. And then you have the wilderness map and, and what actually is on there. Encounters for each of the things you can have on there. Fossil sites, fungal blooms, and then areas of interest. The Kraken Lake and, and environment encounters there. Uh, western shoreline, the protected wetlands. Things you can run into there. Whole bunch of cool stuff. Her dome with Thul Fool's dome. Thul Flu's dome. There it is. Um, the sorceress from the cephalopod civilization under the sea of calamities far to the south. Think Jane Goodall among the gorillas, but deeply contemptuous of her subjects. <laughs> the southern shoreline, Stone Spear River, Ape Bridges, Drop Dead Falls. If you're interested in getting in, you know, adding sort of a more wild 
uh, region to your game, something that's not terribly settled. I think a lot of this stuff you could take for like a, you know, Gods of the Forbidden North campaign. A lot of these, I mean, it would be definitely a different vibe of campaign, but a lot of it, the sort of wilderness, crazy, weird stuff going on, you could add in to some of the hexes or expand it to the east and west, because uh, it's not really expanded as is. Um, you could you could add that in, or vice versa. You could take stuff from Gods of the Forbidden North and put it in here. And I think the Gods of the Forbidden North stuff is definitely more grounded. It's more, you know, realistic. <laughs> But this is this is uh, way, and this way more over the top. But they have a certain a certain amount of overlap. I mean, the woolly mammoth with that t trunk tusks hands, the mammoth king, just weird, <laughs> weird. You get the ape men and uh, some maps here. There are a handful of mini dungeons as you're running through. Um, some of them are. I love that one. Some of them are uh, a bit. Um, yeah, but, but pretty small, right? You get the Science Fungoid sur Surface Incursion Research Facility. It's just very, very uh, simple, but useful, readable, and it would be easy to run from. Absolutely. Get these weird <laughs> Science Fungoid Specialists. Um, I love it. This whole book and the vibe mounted possible in the distance there. The whole vibe of it is, oh, that's so creepy. Scaling Mountain Possible, 8,000 feet from base to apex. Um, you get to the very top and the observation, well, there's stuff on the way. Observation Station of the Bat-Winged Dwarves, and then the mini dungeon, the Man-Ape Temple up at the very top with spiders. The horrible, horrible spiders. Ugh. Zoltec spider thing of Mountain Possible. I hate spiders, man. And of course, you climb the giant mountain and there is just... Spiders up there. Why wouldn't there be? <laughs> it's horrifying to me. But there, are you get the frost giants and stuff to run into here. The grandest hovel. I love that art. I love that piece of art. That's a really good one. I, I, that appeals to me quite a lot. Get the grassy plain. You know, a lot of this. It reminds me of like a less disturbing hubris. And that's same, it's similar, got that over-the-top Gonzo DCC vibe, but it takes it a different direction. If you've read Hubris, you'll know it's like really gruesome and body horror grotesque. This is like Hubris, this is like that same, again, it, it's over-the-top, but it's not gruesome and grotesque in the same way. It's silly. It's way more lighthearted. Yeah, it's, it's gruesome and gross at times, and it's got that element, but it's, it's not as aiming to kind of shock you as Hubris was. So ends this expedition to the Odious Uplands. Cack. Great piece of art there. You get some appendices, the history, the cults, complimentary hirelings, my character died, how does my new NPC, how does my new PC show up, and the player's guide, which is great. It has a comic book to kind of get you in the vibe um, and give you a little bit of information about the place, character creation, and how you should do it. You can do level zero characters, uh, citizen liches, as they're called. There's some new DCC classes, dwarf, blue or gray, the underworld otter, the Woolly Neanderthal, the Citizen Lich, which is kind of interesting, the Underworld Ranger. And you get some player backgrounds. I love this note. If you love your DM, read this before play begins. If you lack basic human decency, your DM will summarize the basic information given here at the beginning of the session. But here it is. Save everyone some time. <laughs> Sometimes I feel that way, right? You put out a, put together a handout, you give it to your players, and they don't read it. You're like, oh. You're, you lack basic human decency. Actually, it hasn't happened very much in my games, I have to say. Especially with my current group. They read They read it. Great pieces of art here with some new appendices for monsters, treasures, and spells. And if you run DCC, this is a great little book to have. You can get a bunch of new weird creatures to add into your game. Some of them are weirder than others, certainly, but the players have not seen these before. So you put them in the game, they will be kind of grossed out, surprised. Titanoswine, trout, a razorback trout, uh, the Tyrannoclops. Vat goons, a worm soldier. They're gonna yeah, a mustachioed yak. I love that. Carrier worm. Some anti chaos pills. The aqueous telescope. Beetles gold. Box of eyes. Chaosometer. Death ray revolver. Jellyfish leather. <laughs> Monster repellent. Null rod and a whole bunch of potions. The fizzy drink of ocular autonomy. Tincture of unendurable hideousness. 
psychoactive stone, tensor platforms, whistle of, the, of dim control, and a Zaracanth industry ZR2 lightning gun. Then you get some new spells for DCC. DCC spells are great. I love DCC spells. It's one of the things that makes that system so much fun. So you get a whole bunch more of those. You get some handouts, a portion of the underworld, player map, Appendix G, Upper Macedonia, a brief primer. This talks about the world. Again, this is for the players. All this stuff is in here. So you made it back to the surface. And then uh, what happens there? Great piece of art there at the end. Appendix P, patrons. Uh, for, again, um, DCC, because DCC uses patrons for its spells. Null the Mindless God. Cephalax. Ooh, creepy. Shagath Ka, the Worm Sultan, he can become your patron. <laughs> oh, gross. And Thrantrix, the Ineffable. Zoltek, the Spider King. It's interesting that most of these things are monsters that you can, I think, fight. Oh, I love that. Um, but then you can also become their, their uh, they can become your patron. The whole saga in one volume. I love that picture. Old school. Completely unfathomable dungeon mood of production. Yak. So that was completely uh, Operation Unfathomable, or rather completely unfathomable, which is a combination of um, Operation Unfathomable and the ODS Uplands and the handouts, uh, the player ha the player supplements and stuff. It all comes in one big book. This There is the, I think it's again, Labyrinth Lord um, or uh, Swords and Wizardry, I always forget. But the other one is DCC, and that's the one I, uh, that's the one I primarily have and read through because it's, uh, you know, it's my preference. I like the DCC vibe. I definitely, uh, it, I dig it. So uh, I'll put links below to where you can get this. Um, and uh, I highly recommend it if you guys are interested in this sort of weird, gonzo, over-the-top thing. This is definitely going to be, I don't know, right up your alley. So check it out. Hope this has been interesting, guys, and I'll see you all in another video.